Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to paint the Judicia from Warhammer 40,000 Indomitus. So the first colour we're going to use is going to be Citadel Dryad Bark. I'm going to use this to paint his leather coat. When you look at the pictures of the coat, it's got some interesting textures on it, and interesting colours, so we're going to try and get through that by using normal paint and then one contrast a little bit later on. It just kind of stains the whole thing a little bit browner and gives it more of a leathery look. It also makes it really, really smooth, which is quite cool. So just give all this leather coat a decent coat of dried bark, so it's nice and smooth. And we'll move on to the next colour. The next one we're going to use is Citadel Mornfang Brown. I'm going to use this to do his holster, the two pouches on his back and also the cloth around his face. Now later on in the video, I do fail to continue painting the face mask part of it, so whenever you're working on the holster and the pouches, just work on that little mask around his face as well. You can give these a nice smooth coat of Mornfang Brown, and we can move on to the next colour. So next up we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Word Burrers Red. This is just going to be to do his gloves. Now it's quite interesting this model, he's got like around three shades of red on them. He's got his gloves, the handle for his sword, the grip part, and also the purity seals with all different shades of red. So we're going to set these up by using three different bases for them. This is the first one. So once you've got the gloves painted, it's on to the next colour. So now we're going to go on to Citadel Corn Red. I'm going to use this just to do the purity seals. He has one on his power pack at the back there. And he has the other one on his arm, wrapped around his blade hand there. Like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Mephist on red, the third red. I'm going to use this to do the inside of his jacket. So you can see little bits on the side here where it's sort of folded around his waist. There's also inside the end of each sleeve and also the front and rear part where there's a slight split in it. You can see a little bit of red in those parts too. So try and be careful not to get red onto the brown. Then once you've got these red bits done, it's on to the next one. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Rakarth Flesh. We're going to use this to do the purity seals, or the parchments hanging from the purity seals, I should say. Now the one on his other wrist does wrap around quite a few times. Can't tell whether it would be shredded by getting trapped in parts of his arm or his arms moving around, but you get them on people with flames as well and they seem okay, so they must be made of strong stuff. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. I'm going to use this for the blade of the sword and also the chain which is holding the hourglass and the little rosaries that are going around his waist holding the little container which is just to the right of his knee there. We'll be using this to do all the studs that are on him once we've finished all the rest of the colours. Now we're going to use Citadel Retributor Armour, and this is to do all of the gold. So it's got some interesting details on him that are done in gold. Little parts of his knees, parts of the hilt of the sword, various little decorations and icons. Now what I found looking at the pictures, some of these skulls and the little halos around the skulls are actually 
different coloured gold by the look of it. It might just be the way the light's catching them. But I have done them different coloured gold so they stand out a little bit more. So once we've finished doing these bits in the Retributor armour, we're now going to do our other skulls and the little halos using Citadel Liberator Gold, which is what we're now working with. So just give these a nice smooth layer of Liberator Gold. May take one or two. Sometimes it does come out a bit thin. It does tend to separate really, really quickly as well. But I think painting these in different coloured golds does set it off a little bit. Makes certain parts of it stand out a little bit more than they would do if they were all the same shade. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of the new colour, Citadel Rune Lord Brass. And we're going to paint the frame of the hourglass using this. It does look very pale, this colour, when you're first applying it. But when you use the Cryptek Armour Shade Gloss over the top of it, it really does set it off nicely. So I do like the new paints that they've released. I think they're really, really cool. Now we're going on to a little bit of Citadel Ushabti Bone. This is just to do the skull head at the top there. I usually would start it with some Citadel Rakarth Flesh as the base coat, but it looks a lot lighter on this miniature than bone usually would be the way I paint it. So I thought I'd start with Ushabti Bone and then we can build up from that with a few lighter layers just to really brighten it up a bit. Like so. Now I'm going to use a little tiny bit of Citadel Lead Belcher, and this is just to do the little edges to this belt part across his front there. Didn't seem as bright as the other silvery metallic, so I thought I'd use a bit of Lead Belcher on there, then once it's washed, that should do it fine. So just give that a nice little coat there, be very careful not to get it onto the coat. Or any little decorations on him. And once that's in place, that's fine. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Null Oil Gloss, which is a bit of a rare one for me to use. But when I was looking at the picture of this guy, the sword, and also the trim on his holster and the pistol, appear to be a lot more shiny than they usually would do. So I gave these a coat of the Null Oil Gloss and it really does make a difference if you can get the little kind of, not pools of it on there, but so the insides of those metal bits are a bit darker than the outsides. And once that dries it'll still have the shine to it but also the darkness around it. And because of the way the shades work it'll leave you with the silvery edges on it. Now I'm going to use the normal Null Oil which is a nice matte colour Going to use this on the chain and also on the rosaries. I'm playing about with a couple of little different things on this. I say the gloss null oil and the contrast that I'm using a little bit later. It's just to try and get those colours that they seem to have nicely on the miniature on the Games Workshop site there. So we're also doing the leather coat with null oil as well, just to darken that up. So that we've got darker areas in the recesses as well as a cat shouting at me around by my feet. Now I'm going to use Citadel Apothecary Right Contrast. I'm going to use this on the helmet, which will give it that slight shading, but then once we start adding the colours and the highlights to the helm and the bones on the side there, that will really give it a nice shade effect to it. Now it's the usual Citadel Drucci Violet. We're going to use this on the Mephist on Red. We're going to use different shades on the gloves and also on the purity seal. So this is literally just for the coat, the red parts on the coat. Of 
like so. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Cryptek Armor Shade Gloss, which is the new shade. As I said earlier, it really does set off this brass colour. Gives it a really nice deep and mottled colour. Does make it look like an old relic rather than just being shaded and bright and new. So I do recommend getting this colour if you haven't got it. I think the three new colours that they released and the Tesseract Glow actually were all really worth having in your collection. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Seraphim Sepia. I'm going to use this just on the scrolls or the parchments from the Purity Seals. So the one that goes around his arm there and also the one on the other side on the power pack. So a very quick layer there. Next up is Citadel Caroberg Crimson Shade. I'm just going to use this to do the wax parts of the Purity Seals. Again, another very quick layer. Now I'm going to use a little bit more Nuln Oil just to give the coat another coating of it. Slightly out of focus there, but you can see some of the blade guard behind him. We're also going to use this Nuln Oil to do the pouches and the holster as well. So finally we're going to use some Citadel Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to use this to do all of the gold on a miniature. Now this will darken down the gold. So give it some nice shaded areas. So once it's finished, the darkness of his armour and the darkness of the shades on the gold should look pretty cool. Do this on the gloves as well, the Grax Earth Shade, and that'll give them the darkness that they need. And we can just highlight them in a little bit. So the final kind of shade we're using is the Contrast Gore Grunter Fur. I'm going to use this to coat the leather jacket. Now you just want to give this a decent layer. You don't really want to be letting it pool so it does the darker areas and things. This is mainly just to colour the leather before you start highlighting it again. It does give it that nice deep kind of brown that you get from dark leather jackets. So give that a decent coat. And when it comes to highlight that, you should have the Null Oil shade coming through and then the highlights on top. So first things, we're going to work on a coat. We're going to use some Citadel Dryad Bark. I'm just going to start working on the tops of all the creases. Now I'm not going too mad with this, we don't really want to highlight it too much because we do want to keep that brown shade from the Gore Grunter and the Null Oil bits in the recesses. So you are only going to do some thin highlights across all these areas. You can see I'm not doing too much at the crest of each of those creases, just a little tiny bit on each one. Obviously on the wider ones you can add a little bit more, but you don't want to do too much of this colour because you do want to have quite narrow highlights going across it. So we're going to add a little bit of Citadel Ricard Flesh to the Dryad Bark. I'm just going to add another layer of highlights to this. I'm trying to get the highlights underneath each of these little buttonholes on the back there. Down the edges and like thin highlights on the creases. Now this is kind of what we do when I'm usually highlighting the pouches and things like that where I do the scuffing around the edges and I'm trying to get the kind of thin scuffs and highlights that I do on the leather pouches usually. So once you've added these highlights, we should be fine with that. Next up, we're going to be using some Citadel Mephist on red. And we're going to start reapplying the red to the grip of the sword, and his shoulder pad, and also the insides of his jacket where you can see. Now some of the bits on the inside of the jacket are quite awkward to reach, so you might want to use a really thin brush for that.
Now we've done that, we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. This gives a nice kind of orangey red highlight to the grip and also the shoulder. Don't want to be doing too much of a highlight on the lining to his coat, just a little bit. There is very, very little surface area to those bits in the kind of creased bits underneath his arm there. So just as long as you get some of it on there, it doesn't matter too much if you don't do the whole ledge or anything like that. And you can just do a bit of general highlighting down the side here. Now we're going to move on to Citadel Wild Rider Red, just to do one final highlight on these red areas. Once you finish those, we can move on to the next colour. Next up is the Word Burrs Red. I'm going to reapply some colour back to the gloves. Now we do want these quite dark. I don't want them too highlighted and with too many standouty colours. So we are just going to use the Word Burrs Red and not do any further highlights on them, just so you're keeping that dull, dark look to the red leather. And it does look pretty good when you do it this way. I think too many highlights would detract from the darkness of the glove. Next up, we are going to use a little bit of Citadel Retributor Armour and start reapplying this colour to the gold areas that we used it on earlier. Now the handy thing about using the Liberator Gold after the Retributor Armour is that we can do this Retributor Armour and then we can start highlighting all the gold in one go then when we start using the Liberator Gold. So re-highlight everything with the Retributor Armour and we can move on to the next colour and get the rest of it done. Now we're going to go on to the Liberate Gold. So now you can highlight all of the gold on the miniature because we'll be using Liberate Gold to highlight the Retributor Armour and also to reapply the colour back to the earlier Liberate Gold pieces. So think about where the light's going to be hitting the Retributor Armour and you want to highlight those areas to give it a nice gleam so it looks like the light is catching that. You want to make sure that you are leaving some of that shade in there as well, you don't want to cover up too much of that. Now I'm going to mix some Vallejo Model Air Chrome with the Liberator Gold. I'm going to start highlighting all of the gold parts. And when you're highlighting these you want to be thinking about where the light's going to catch them. And just highlight those top edges to really give them a shine. And if you want to do a few tiny little Highlights the bottom edges of things just to make it look like there might be light reflecting off something else. But generally you want to keep most of the highlights to the top. With the odd one on the underside just to give it that little bit of shine. Now we're going to start working on the sides or the casing of the hourglass. It's going to start reapplying the Rune Lord Brass. I do want to be leaving quite a lot of the shade on these struts, near the top and the bottom of the struts. Keeping it so that most of the light areas are in the middle. I do really like that shade though, because it does give quite an uneven, almost mottled look when you've finished applying it. Now we're going to go on to Canoptech Alloy, which is the other new one, and we're just going to highlight that Rune Lord brass. So again, we're going to try and keep those highlights to the middle sections of the struts, and then highlight the top edges 
the top and bottom of the hourglass. Also do some light highlights on the Aquilas that are one on each side. I did use the brush and sort of like lightly dry brush the alloy on for the highlights. And now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Vallejo Modeler Chrome just to do the buttons and reapply colour to the rosaries going around his waist there. And reapply this to the chain as well so you've got those nice shiny links that's been well polished, well looked after. I'm going to start working on the helm so it's back to Citadel Ushabti Bone. And you want to be leaving the areas sort of by the temples and just above the brows and the underside of these ribs so that you can still see the apocryphy white shade or apocryphy white contrast I should say. But you want to leave these parts shaded. Because even though it's not that dark a shade, you will see it once it's all highlighted, it does stand out quite well. So we've now mixed a little bit of Vallejo White with the Ushabti Bone. I'm going to start applying the first highlight to the helm. So I'm going to be thinking about where the light's going to be catching the helm and working on that. Even a little bit of the shade on the brow and on the temples again. You can really see that shade is starting to stand out a bit as we're applying these layers. Main areas you want to be thinking about highlighting are the top of the cheekbones and the top of the kind of where the eyebrows would be and the two ridges running up each side of the skull there. Now I'll add in a little bit more Vallejo White to the previous mix. I'm going to do another highlight there. Now when we're doing these highlights you want to make sure that you're leaving some of the previous highlights on show. So maybe cover 50% of the previous highlight with this one. So that you can still see that working in stages towards the lighter colour. So now I'm going to start working on the corn red for the purity seals. So you just want to give these a general recolouring with this, leaving the carabao crimson in the recesses. And once you've got this done, you can start highlighting them. So these are some quite quick layers to do. I'm going to start highlighting with a little bit of Citadel Wasdaka red. When you're highlighting them, you want to make sure this goes onto the top edges. You don't want to do any of the undersides or anything like that. Now we've added a little, tiny little bit of white to the Wasdaka red, just to lighten it that little bit more. We are going to put one little final highlight on some of the top edges, just to really bring that colour out. Like so. Now we're going to start working on the parchments using a little bit of Citadel Rakarth Flesh. Now again, when you're thinking about where the light's going to catch this, you want to make sure that you're highlighting the top edges of things and leaving the shade underneath. So you've got this little ridge here. You don't want to do the colour underneath there as well, because if you do the colour underneath, it kind of takes away the look that there is shade going on there. So if you leave that a little bit more shaded on the underside of any little ridges, it'll give quite a nice light effect. I've added a little white to the Citadel Ricard flesh. I'm just going to do the first layer of highlights on the parchment parts. So I'm going to try and get the edges that are going to be catching the light and then also any ridges, anything like that. You want to make sure that you catch those top ridges or the tops of the ridges or any little nicks or tears in it. You also want to do the 
underside of them, so it looks like the light's catching the, the piece of rip paper, rip parchment. So the top edge of any crest or any ridge, that's where you want to be highlighting with this. So now I'm going to add a little bit more white to the mix and do one final highlight with it. And again, that's probably highlighting about 50% of the previous layer. Just give it that nice, really light extreme highlight on there. Now we're going to be using Vallejo Black. I'm going to use this to do the cuffs because it was only when I was part way through I realised that the cuffs on the jacket on the model on the Games Workshop site are black. So repaint this with a bit of Vallejo Black or whichever black you're using. Then we can start highlighting that and doing it the same colour as the rest of the jacket. Or giving it the same kind of highlights as the rest of the jacket I should say. Like so. So now I'm going to add a little bit of Ricard flesh to the Vallejo black. We're just going to start highlighting these cuffs the same way that we've highlighted the rest of the jacket. So we're going to be doing quite rough edges to the highlight, as though it scuffs on the material. Like the leather has been chafed and scuffed a little bit. So it doesn't matter if your highlights are a little bit jagged or rough. That's kind of the effect we're going for here. Like so. Now we're going to be adding a little bit more of a car flesh to that mix. I'm going to do one final highlight on these cuffs. It's just going to be another rough highlight, just in the centre of the ones that you just applied, just to give that kind of scuffed look to the leather. So it has been through the wars, been scraped and scratched a little bit. Now it's time for the pouches. I'm going to be working on these with a little bit of Mournfang Brown. So remember I mentioned earlier we're doing the face mask in the same colours, so you do want to start working on them at the same time as you're doing this. I will just add it into the video at the end when I've done that, but it's basically the same process that you're following here, where you want to highlight the areas that are on top of the ridges and the crests in the material. Make sure you leave the shade in the recesses to give it that nice darkness. Once you've reapplied the colours again, we can start working on the highlights. So using Citadel Ricard Flesh again, mix that with a little bit of Mournfang Brown and we're going to do the first layer of highlights. And again, this is the same as we've just done on the leather jacket cuffs and the ridges on the jacket. You are trying to make it look a little bit rough like it is scuffed. So you do want to kind of give that the, rather than a smooth edge to it, you do want to give it a bit of a rough edge to it as though it has been scraped and scratched. So you want to do this on the pouches as well, but on the mask, not so much. I've just left the mask with nice smooth highlights on it. So now I'm going to add a little final bit of Ruckar Flesh to the previous mix. I'm just going to go down and do a slightly rough extreme highlight on those. Just as areas where it would have been scuffed that little bit more than everywhere else. So it gets a slightly lighter leathery kind of colour on there. We're also going to do this on the pouches, and then again on the face mask, you're going to be doing quite a smooth highlight on that. Now we're just going to use some Vallejo White to paint his eye lenses. Now the eye lenses on the miniature look really, really small. and I wasn't too keen on trying to do kind of reflections on them, so I thought I'd make them look a bit more sinister. Almost like the eyes of the skull on the Master of Possession. So we're just going to paint these eyes with just pure white. Then we're going to use some Caraberg Crimson Shade. 
around the eyes and over the eyes to give them a kind of reddish kind of colour but so that the white makes the eye itself stand out like so just touch up any of the really shabty bone that you might knock off there when you're putting the shade on and to finish them we're just going to use again another little touch of pure white and just do a spot in the centre of each eye to give them a little bit of a glow to make them look a little bit more sinister Now I'm going to use some Vallejo German Grey. This is going to be to highlight the black on the armour. Now if you've got any overspill from other colours on the armour, you can just use a bit of black. I was lucky enough this time. Thankfully I didn't manage to get any of the other colours onto the black armour too much, other than areas that are going to be highlighted. So I just went straight onto the German Grey. You want to be thinking about where the light's going to catch the armour and apply the German Grey there. If you have managed to get any other colours onto the black armour, just touch them up. With a little bit of black and then move on to this German grey section. So if the light's going to be catching that part of the armour you want to be highlighting that. Next up to highlight the armour edges we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. I'm using this to highlight the edges of the armour. So any upper edges and sides on it you want to be highlighting that. You don't want to be using this too much to cover any particular areas because it's quite a marked difference from the German grey. You are just using it to edge highlight certain areas that would be catching the light. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. I'm going to use this to do all of the studs on the armour. Now it's got quite a few but it does look really cool when they're all done. It does make them stand out and make his armour really look quite a lot different from the rest of the Primaris Marines. I find it interesting that this guy doesn't have the massive Aquila on his chest like the Chaplain does. He's got quite plain armour in comparison. But still looks really really good. Now I'm going to go on to Vallejo Black. I'm going to start working on the hourglass. So the first thing we do is we paint all of the glass sections with the black just to give that a nice smooth coat and give you something to work on with the rest of the colours. So now we're using a little bit of Vallejo Black. Again, we're just going to work on the purity seals quickly because it failed to do the inscriptions on them. So we're just using a really thin brush. I'm using a Wargamer character brush from Army Painter. I'm just going to do some little horizontal lines just to represent text on all of the parchments. Next up, we're going to use Vallejo Beige Brown. But any kind of similar brown colour from Citadel or any other company would work. You want to be kind of working on getting a squarish bit of colour on here. I start off painting it rounded at the top, but doesn't really matter too much about the rounded top because we're going to smooth that off and make it go straight at the moment. In a moment, rather. And this is going to be the base for working on the sand. So basically here we're going to use a little bit of black, mix that with beige brown so you've got a dark mix which is going to go against the black on the hourglass. So you want this dark layer across the top of the sand on each side. Now we're going to mix a little bit more beige brown in with it. I'm going to do a layer under the darkened layer so that you've got two layers and the beige brown at the bottom. Now I'll just add in a little bit more beige brown to the previous mix and we're going to do one final layer between the other shades and the beige brown at the base of the sand timer. 
So with those colours done, we're now going to use a tiny little bit of beige brown and mix in a little bit of Vallejo white with that. And then we're going to do one highlight down the side here on the sand on each side. Just a slightly lighter section. Like so. Now adding a slightly more white to the previous mix. We're just going to do a little highlight within that one that we've just done. I don't want it to be a straight highlight. This is sort of like slightly curved with the curve of the hourglass. Like so. And now we're just going to use some pure Vallejo white to do a really thin highlight from the black straight through the highlights that we've just put on. Nice thin line there. I'm using an Army Painter Wargamer character brush here. Just want to do a few little lines, highlighting that and a dot at the top of each line that's going up the hourglass. And then we're going to do a straight line going back down each side of the hourglass so that you have those lines on each side and then we're going to add a couple of them to the top as well and once you finish those that is the finished judicia absolutely outstanding model that really impressed with it and great fun to paint thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much.